Welcome to today's program, Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. Uh, we take your questions, we discuss them, Father Gruner answers them. Continue to send us your questions via email at questions at the Fatima Center dot com. Today we have a question about music. And um, the question is, my question is on music. Where do we draw the line on what type of music or musicians are acceptable to listen to at home? Well, uh, first of all, I think the general principle is that we should avoid the occasions of sin. And at the same time, we should, uh, we should whatever is good, whatever is holy, whatever is beautiful, we should support. So when it comes to music, there's beautiful music, and then there's, there's music which uh, appeals to your lower passions. And that's, I mean, musicians know this, and you as a musician know this better than I do, John. Yeah, very and, well. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so there's, I mean, the so-called rock music uh, it has a beat, I believe that, and it's the it's the it's the and the low uh, sounds that are used, and, and and with a certain rhythm to it, and they're used. I mean, not only not only in modern culture, but for other other cultures. I mean, in 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 Africa and other places, they would use music to get people riled up in some way or the other. So, music has an influence on us that sort of bypasses our reason. And we sort of well, it speaks and, directly to the soul. That's yeah. I think I think Boethius said that. Yeah. It by it goes directly projected to the innermost part of man. It's, 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 it's from, and the same, I mean, just like the sense of smell has a certain bypassing of something. I don't know much about these things, but I do know that music has been used to both move men to, uh, and women to great things and also to move them to terrible things. Well, you know, um, as, as human beings, I mean, you could say we, 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 we're kind of made up in a hierarchy. We have the intellect, which is our highest faculty, and then we have the heart, which is our, represents our emotions. And then we have the lower passions. And each one of those things is in proper order. We can see just by a man standing up. The head is the highest. It should rule over the heart. And the head and the heart should rule the lower passions. Mm -hmm. Music should be structured the same way. And it is connected to melody, harmony, and rhythm. So, what, so we have melody, which is the highest part of music. It's very hard to write a pretty melody. Uh, harmony, which enhances and, and, and warms up the, harmony, the, the, the melody, if we can say so. And then rhythm that's necessary to keep the music moving along because rhythm is part of music. And that hierarchy should be followed. Good music is when that hierarchy is followed. But when you have the lower passions, the beat being primary, then the, the kindest thing we can say is that the music is disordered because it's primarily pushing and inflaming the lower passions because you know all art imitates nature so this this is not our lord on the cross this is a sculptor or a, a someone who works with porcelain who made who made this and it's an imitation of what we see in nature uh, mosaics. What, what, what really happened on Calvary? What really happened? This, is, this, this is portraying it it's, in, in, in art. It's represented, yeah. Yes. Same thing when we see a play. We're not really, if we see Romeo and Juliet, we're not really seeing Juli, uh, Juliet stab herself on stage. It's a representation of it. Okay, mm. it's an imitation. So if fine arts imitate nature, then what, and, and if music is a fine art, then what in nature is music imitating? And the answer is, it's hum imitating human passions. It's imitating human emotions. And if you don't believe me, just watch a suspenseful movie and turn the music off. Turn the background music. The suspense is gone. It's imitating our emotions. And then when we hear that music, it gets inside of us and stirs up those emotions ourselves. And that's why people like Aristotle and Plato and Boethius and these, these great minds throughout the centuries they were very careful about music and the structure of music because they know the effect it has on the individual. Uh, my friend, Dr. Andrew Childs, he says, um, he's a professor of music, and he says, why do we like pop music? Because it's easy. It doesn't demand anything from us. We just feel the beat, and we just bop along with it. But I would argue, you know, I, I, what's, what many families do is they control what music that is in the house on a regular basis. And I would say that rock music should, be not, the, should not be the soundtrack of our home. Yes. Because it is, even though there is some fine musicianship out there, uh, 
Um, fine skills, if you can say. In fine music. skills, yeah, fine skills. In but it. is I at mean, the service of a music which is counterproductive. So to yeah, so so because of the disorder of it, I mean, you're not, you know, I know some people will say, well, I'm never going to stop listening to it. Okay, I'm not. I can't tell you what to do, but at least. I don't think it sh rock music should be the soundtrack of our lives. Well, the thing I think is, we should aim higher. The person, the question is asked of us in this program and, and asking, well, where do we draw the line? What types of music? Well, we're, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that first of all, people are interested in saving their souls if they're asking questions of us. And so we can't tell them what to do. Of course, you know, God can tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can, we can explain to them that if this music has certain effects on them, and it, maybe it doesn't affect everybody the same way, but it affects most people the same way, that that rock music is going to appeal to the baser passions. And therefore, I would say, this doesn't mean that you can't go into a store to buy something you have to get there, and that's what the music is playing there. But of your own choice, you should not be listening to this stuff whenever you can avoid it. And um, because there's, the problem is, what people don't realize is that the rock music industry is an industry. Yes. So they have to keep cranking out the CDs, cranking out the MP3s, good, bad, or indifferent, and there is no way that you can keep the quality up when you're cranking out music like Sausage or like Good and Plenty's. There is no way you can keep it up. And so even, so the music, because of the industry nature of it, necessarily drops dramatically. So I mean, I would I would urge people to be to learn to be discriminating in music, yes. and uh, learn good music, not necessarily only classical, but bluegrass and 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 other, you know, Irish Irish fiddle music and Scottish uh, uh, Highland music and things like that. Because we all like things that are going to spunk us up to give sure. us the energy to exercise or, sure. or wash the garage or something, yeah. you know. Um, but uh, but. I would close by saying, remember the order. Yeah. The, the intellect corresponds to melody. The emotions, the heart corresponds to harmony. And the rhythm corresponds to the lower passions. And music should be properly ordered with melody in the forefront. Yes. So that's it for today, and we will see you next time.